How is the going guys? Mutemoya back again with another video. So guys, in today's tutorial, uh, we'll be retouching these amazing images right here and I'm actually stuck on which image I should retouch. But I feel I should retouch the first one because I really think it looks so nice. And yeah, I feel I should retouch this and yeah, I feel it really looks nice. I won't do any adjustments because I can see on this image it really looks nice. Uh, as I always say, and I've been saying this in all my videos, I always shoot clean images with the uh, light setting and camera settings. So I, always, I always make sure there's no much to do on uh, color correction and everything. So what I'll do, I'll just uh, let me merge all this and just open in Photoshop. Waiting for my images to open. Okay, so guys, my images have opened and I'm still stuck on which image I should retouch on this specific tutorial. And I think I'll go with this image, all this. Let me go with this, then the next tutorial I can retouch this. So let me go with this image. So guys, the first thing I'll do, I'll come here to my cropping tool and then select the Instagram size, which is 4 uh, by 5 or 8 by 10. So crop it until you feel to the level that you feel is okay with you. Uh, let's say there. Let me see. I can just balance this like that. Yes, I feel this already looks nice. And if you can see, guys, the face is a little bit darker than this part of the of the model. So what I'll do, I'll uh, go to my layers, a new adjustment layer, then select curves. And then I'll select uh, this picker tool and select the face of the model, then push it up slightly there. And then what I'll do, I'll just control I to invert, uh, pick my brush tool, increase the size of the brush by the light right bracket and to reduce the side, to less, pre press the left bracket. So increase the brush and make sure the flow is at around, let's say, uh, from 1 to 10 and just brush on this side of the model's face to just increase the brightness of the face. I really like these images because the model has an amazing skin. And I shot these images with my Nikon D750. I like how the makeup new the makeup is nude so I really like these amazing image, images. I really like these images. One of my favorite shoots I've done so far. So let's match this together. Okay. So guys, uh, one, one tip I need to tell you. If you're more into headshot photography, always advise your make makeup artist to do nude makeup. That way it will make your images come out amazing. Okay. So guys, the first thing I'll do, I need to remove the blemishes on the model skin. So what I do, I duplicate my layers, control, Control J twice, Control J, Control J. And then what I'll do, I'll, let's call this texture. And let's call this color. Uh, select on the texture layer, then uh, disable the texture layer, then select on the color layer. Go to filter. Guys, what we're doing now is, is creating the layers, the frequency separation layers to remove the blemishes. Go to filter, blur. Gaussian blur and guys remember our image is a 16-bit image and Yeah, so I zoom up. I reduce the radius to let's say 0 0.1 and then select a place in my models Skin where I feel the textures are a little bit higher and let's say it's this area right here Yeah, this area right here and then zoom in Until you feel the textures disappear, but you can see the eyes and let's say five let's Just write five here and then say okay Go to my texture layer and then enable the eye. Uh, go to filter, blur, or make it visible. Go to, filter, go to image, 
then apply image. And remember, as I said, our image is a, a 16 bit image. So instead of using blending mode of subtract, let's change this to add and then select invert and then select the color. Here, uh, where it says match, select the color layer, then say OK. Uh, so far, you should have this image showing only the textures of the model skin and then change the blending mode here to linear light. Awesome. Uh, create a black and white layer on top of this uh, image so that you can see the blemishes perfectly and then zoom in your, zoom in your image slightly. Uh, let's disable the, yeah, let's just delete the black and white and then select our clone stamp tool right here. Increase the size of the brush, then sample, press Alt or Option in your keyboard and then sample on a clean area and paint. And make sure the size of the brush is bigger than the blemish you're removing. Yeah. So guys, I'll just fast forward this process of blemish removal and then I'll come back as we do now the actual frequency separation on this specific image. Hey guys, so welcome back. I just finished removing uh, all the blemishes on this specific image. You can see how the face looks. It looks very clean. Um, uh, this, this is how the image looked before and now the image how it looks now. And now guys, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going now to do the actual uh, frequency separation. So what I'll do, I'll select on my color layer, uh, pick my mixer brush tool, uh, make sure it's a very soft brush. Uh, it's a very clean brush. Uh, wet 10, load 75, mix 90, and flow at 100. Uh, some more layers not selected. And now just slightly zoom in and let me brush this image. You can see this shadow right here. I'll just start by... You can see I left this car right here because I really wanted it to live here for authenticity to make the image look as original as possible. Let me reduce this. Uh, create black and white to make sure you can see the highlights and the shadows perfectly. And what I'll do, I just press R in my keyboard and rotate your image slightly. And let's start with this part of the face. Increase the size of brush. Uh, right bracket to reduce the size. Uh, left bracket. Let's brush comfortably. Don't brush. Brush exactly how the face flows. We don't want to mess up anything. 
just leave this car right there because I feel it's it's natural scar. Take the image like that. Uh, pick your mixer brush tool. Just. So you can see how we're brushing, guys. Also, because I really don't want this tutorial to be uh, so long, I just fast forward this process of uh, brushing so that uh, I won't take so much time with this process. And I'll come back when I'm done with the frequency separation. Uh, if I could show you the before and after, uh, these are these are my image looks before blemish removal and frequency separation, and this is how my image looks. It looks cleaner, and now you can see before, uh, before, after. The next thing I'll do, I'll go back to my texture layer and pick my clone stamp tool. Then I just want to go back, I identify the the blemishes that haven't been flattened properly with the with the with the by dodge and burn, just come back to the image and just properly just properly remove them, the small blemishes that weren't uh, fully removed by frequency separation. So I won't fast forward this because there is no much to do. Uh, just we had done a lot on our first blemish removal. And I like how the model has some nice texture on our face. remaining actually you can just pick your uh, can come here to your brush and pick the spot healing brush tool just make sure the size is very small uh, to the size of the blemish you're removing and just zoom out slightly you don't want to edit your images so zoomed in so I feel so far it's really looks nice I really like how the image is looking now. If I could show you, uh, guys, 
this is the before and this is the after. Before we do frequency separation and after we have done frequency separation, let's, let's, let's remove the black and white once more. You can see how natural and the skin of this model uh, looks. Uh, we just removed mostly the blemishes, the big blemishes. So, yeah. Guys, okay, sometimes uh, doing these videos, I uh, actually have uh, so much anxiety, but I always try to motivate myself and always keep, keep on going because I just enjoy editing photos. And as I edit, I'm trying to, I'm also in the process of teaching myself and practicing to become a better retoucher. And that's why you can see um, I really like doing these videos uh, and yeah. There is nobody, nobody at this world uh, has ever become uh, good in anything uh, without practicing. And that's why I always like doing the video because I'm still practicing and try to make authentic, amazing picture videos and creating nice pictures. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so far I feel the image is really looking amazing. So with that, we have done with frequency separation. Now the next thing I'll do, I need to do some dodge and burn on this amazing image. So what I'll do, uh, guys, I know everyone so far knows how to uh, create um, dodge and burn curves, but for this video, I decided to do everything manually. So what I'll do, I'll go to curves and then go to new adjustment method, then curves, uh, select on a part in your model skin where you think it's bright and then just push it up to make it more brighter or you can just select on in middle of the curve and then push it up let's invert this let's call this dodge and then go to my curves once again and then push this down like this and then invert and let's call this burn Then uh, go to my uh, go to my adjustments uh, to my uh, actions and then run the uh, invert check layer because I want to identify the highlights and the shadows perfectly. And then what I'll do on the on these uh, levels right here, push this this side, guys. If you need this invert check layer, just DM me and. We'll see how you can get it there. So with this, I can see the shadows and the highlights perfectly. Let me save this because I want to use this uh, making my thumbnail. Awesome. So what I'll do, I'll need to select on the dodge uh, I'll come here to my brush uh, and select, I'll select on my normal brush tool to just, for the shortcut to get the brush, just press B in your keyboard and you get the brush. Make sure the hardness is at 100 and flow is at 100. And then what you'll do, uh, where you see the highlights, for the invert check layer, the dark parts are the highlights and the white parts are the uh, shadows. So let's draw, to make sure the brush is, the, the lines are straight, make sure the smoothness is at 100%. Just draw like this to get more steady lines like that, like that, like that, like that. Just push this, this level slightly. And then for this one right here, just draw like that, like that, like that. For the nose, draw a point there, then press shift, reduce the size of the brush, and then draw, press shift, and then just select here, or just draw like this. Awesome. I feel 
looking nice. If I can just remove the invert check layer, you can see what I'm doing so far. It's really looking nice. So select my bun and then I'll just uh, draw some lines right here like that. Just need to see that line the right there. So this is what I should save to make the invert check to say to make the thumbnail. So I feel this looking nice. So for this one right here, just draw right here like that. Then for this other one right here, I'll just draw like this right there. Then uh, for this, I can see the uh, shadow right here like that. And then this other one right there, that's the shadow. And then this one right here. Then for the dodge, just press this one right here like that. And then for the burn, uh, there's this one right here slightly. Then it's shadow right there. Then for the shadow, you can see this one right here like this, the big one. This other one right here and then just can drag it there like that. Feel uh, for the yeah feel for the shadow that's enough sorry for the so you can see how we're doing it if let's disable the invert check layer and see how our image really looks uh yeah this is the process of making an image look amazing so let's bring back the invert check layer and just paint the burn more like that then this dodge Right there, even, even more, like that. Just this. George, right here, like that. Just reduce the band slightly, very small, and just draw it on the side of the mass. Let's band this. Uh, guys, you can see how we're drawing this. Uh, I can't fast forward this because I really want you to understand how I'm really doing this. I'm mostly drawing, if you're just using black and white, remember the parts which are white on my image, uh, these, are the, these, are the, these are the shadows. So I'll, I'll give you this image to practice. Uh, yeah. Yes, I feel this is looking nice. Let's see. Share here. Yeah, we see where we can put some highlights there. Yeah. So there. Nice. Now, guys, so far, I feel this is looking amazing. I didn't want to brighten this highlight right here, but I just to more to, to make the light look even more uh, nice. So just add some lines here. Just, yeah. That's looking nice. Okay, now I'll delete my invert check layer and let me just undo this and save this too for my thumbnail. Yes. Let's call this uh, thumbnail two. Thumbnail two and okay. Awesome. So, uh, so far, we're doing good. Let's delete this invert check layer. And then I'll also save this and say this is thumbnail, thumbnail three. Thumbnail three. Thumbnail three. Okay, so guys, you can see we have these, uh, the parts which are white, the parts which are white like this, these are for dodge, the parts which are black are for burn, and yeah, so what I'll do, I'll right click right here and select on the mask, on the mask, and then I'll push the feathering until I see I have what I want, how I want my image to look like. I don't want it to be so much, so for the, I select back on the dodge and because you select on the mask it will come automatically but you can see for this one the feather it has 0, 0.00 pixels Let's keep on pushing until it disappears to the image 
until we feel we are comfortable with the results we are getting. See? Before, after, before, after. Right click on your image. Right click on your image like this and let's start with the burn. I already like clicked on the highlights. On the on the on the dodge. So you can see if it's the dodge, we're working with the shadows because we want the separation between the shadows and the highlights to be very smooth. If I can push this, you can see this the separation. So what I'll do, I'll push this slightly and then press Alt in my keyboard and select on this area right here to split this up and just drag this this side and drag this this other side and then select to my on my say okay and then you can see before after then select on my burn and my burn we just want the transition between the uh, the highlights and the shadows to be very smooth so right click right here waiting for it to respond and remember we're just working on these white parts right here this 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 white parts right here so what we'll do just switch, select. You can see the difference it's bringing. So what I'll do, I'll just drag this slightly and press Alt in my keyboard and just drag this in. And this, okay. Perfect. So far, I feel this is looking amazing. So I feel this really looks nice so far. Uh, if you want to reduce, just put them in a group and reduce the opacity even more to make it look Amazing. And now uh, zoom your image and see where now you need to do the perfectioning of the uh, dodge and burn and see where you feel the shadows are in the wrong place or the highlights are in the wrong place. So I come here to my actions, then run my complete dodge and burn action. And now with this, I can now perfect. I select on the micro dodge and burn and then select on the dodge. Uh, or mostly on the burn and just just make sure the flow is at one percent and brush is at zero percent hardness and just brush right here to just balance this uh, shadows right here I don't want just select on the burn and just brush this to be mostly Remove the remove the phone. Sorry. They're looking nice so far. So you can see how I'm brushing. I don't want to mess up anything. Just want to remove the to remove the dodge and the shadows. To remove the shadows and the highlights at the wrong place, which are at the wrong place. So I'm just perfecting this. Balancing it to make it even look better let's disable the invert check layer and see how much we have done so far before after let's see on this one before after before after before after so guys what i'm gonna do i'll just need to remove this shadow right here this one right there feel looks nice yeah it looks nice without that shadow small small shadows on the wrong place before after before after we're doing good just need to remove the burn this area like this like that that looks nice so guys I, I hope you're following along this tutorial to just make my image how to just make my image look like very amazing yes I like this I really like how my image looks right here. Okay, can just reduce this shadow slightly to just balance it. No, I just yeah, do to make it. Or oh, let me reduce the band slightly. 
Yes, I like that. That's looking uh, nice before and after before after okay now guys with this i feel the image uh dodge and burn and frequent separation it really looks nice the next thing i'll do i need to balance the skin tones of this specific image and i'll just uh select let's delete the infrared check layer then press uh control shift alt and e to create a new stamp layer then control j i'll come here to my uh select gradient map and what i'll do i'll Guys, you can see this like this is how the invert check layer looks. You just can use the gradient map. But what I'll do, I'll select right here, and then right here, I'll select. Sorry, it's completely black. Right there, I'll select on this layer there, and then select. Sorry, sorry. So what I'll do, I need to select a uniform color which I feel it mostly fits the model's skin tone. Then just. Let's say this way, no, not that one, not that one, sorry. Just come here and select, put this down. I need to see neutral, neutral skin tone, where is it? Let's say this, but you can see how this looks. I don't like, uh, I think my gradient map is not updated, so what I'll do, i just delete that and go to my uh, actions and run the even skin tone action and it is graded used for grounded scale because my gradient map wasn't yeah so i'll come here and select on the eye on the on these highlights then select right here and select on the highlights perfect select right here and select on the mid tones perfect select right here and select on the shadows See where the shadows are darker. Then say okay. Then say okay. And that finish, finishes up my action. So if I can invert this, it balances the whole image, skin tone. But you can see it applies to the hair. And because these are head shot, I feel I need to just mask. Uh, press, um, press, let's say, the, this. Uh, let's start by brushing first. Because we have inverted the image, we need to re remove the uh, skin tone on some parts, like the background. So make sure the foreground color is uh, black and make sure the flow is at 100% and then start brushing. And because I had already selected the masking, I'll just deselect it, just remove it on the black. Uh, because I had selected on the masking there, sorry, that's to change. Let's continue brushing to remove it on some parts of the image. Yeah, there you go. I don't want the skin tone on the on the on the background mostly. Yeah, so we just brush it like this. This this way. I'm trying to remove the skin tone on the background, but not on the specific image. And mostly on the eyes. See on the eyes. Zoom in slightly. See on the eyes. And the eyes like this guys the easier one is brushing the the skin tones on the image specifically but i'm trying to make sure that the, i haven't taken so much time retouching this image so yep i feel my brush is kind of dragging i don't know why and because she had lines, they're showing the mini, so I just needed it to balance like this. Just, yes, this is looking nice. I like how it looks. Guys, what I'll do, let me just reduce that and then run. Okay, no, no, I just need to overdo it. And do this and then undo it for two. Yeah, I like how this looks, so I just invert this and paint on the specific part of the model's face because I don't want to mess up uh, the background and the hair. So I just need to br brush this on the specific parts of the model's face where I really want the skin tone to appear. Like the face. Yes, there we go. Yeah, this is looking nice. Really coming out. 
nice brush push this up like this it's really coming out awesome guys in my next tutorial i'll show you how to create this even skin tone or how you can actually even the skin tone before you even retouch this and if you have the retouching academy there is also another way of balancing the frequency separate the what balancing the skin tone on the model's face or if you're using capture one it's easier to also balance the skin tone in the model's face but for this one because we're trying to reduce the time uh, on this tutorial i just wanted to show you how you can easily balance the skin tone on most part of the model's face so far i feel this looking awesome yeah i like that yeah i like how the image looks i feel it has some well balanced skin tone and yeah feel looks nice oh we put some on this part of the hair where the the transitions are. yeah i feel this looks nice okay that looking nice so what i'll do i'll go to my uh, selective color then select selective color so what i do i need to work on the reds and i need the contrast on the reds to be so i'll just push this uh, uh blacks this way and then on the cyans i push them slightly that way and on the yellows i push them this way i'll go back to the yellows and push this this way slightly and on on the blacks in then push this slightly that way and because the skin uh pa person's skin is made of reds and the yellows but i feel this is more uh very uh, let's say warm so what i'll do i'll go to my photo filter and then let's select photo filter 82 then i uh, select on this uh cooling filter 82 and what it will do uh just push back your image like this like this to put, reduce the density like that to just make sure it looks nice and guys this is what we have so far with the cooling filter 82 it makes an image look very very amazing but i don't want this to appear on the background so what i'll do i'll come here to my just select uh i feel i feel i need to change the color of the background to make it look more neutral let's reduce this opacity of the cooling filter slightly yes um i don't want i don't want it to appear on the background so i just uh pick my brush and press press just x me okay oh, no, no no let it let it be like that i feel it looks nice yeah let's just let it be like that guys you can see the big difference these two uh just these two colors make to just uh these two layers make to color grade our image so what i'll do i'll go to my uh, let me create a new stamp layer so control fill uh, control shift alt and e to create a new layer and then duplicate the layer once more then go come here to uh select then select color range so what i'll do i need to color grade the background to a different way so i'd select on the background and then what i'll do i need to reduce the contrast of the background or uh, to reduce the brightness of the background so go to um new adjustment there brightness contract and you'll push up with the selection then right click right here and then reduce brightness let's say something like that and let's see like that and then uh go to u and saturation u and saturation and then uh, drag this select this press alt in your keyboard and drag this up like that and then what you'll do uh just press inside the selection reduce the Let's reduce the saturation to something like that and then to make it as neutral as possible. Let's say this way. Or you can select the picker tool and see what colors that the background have. Think that's okay. Yeah. Right click right here and select on the feathering. And then make sure the feathering is not so that this smooth transition from the image the background i feel the background looks more neutral right, right now yeah i feel this looks more neutral right now looks even better even without the 
without the brightness and contrast, it looks, looks even better. But yeah, so you can see there's this highlight here and it was really prominent. And that's why when I selected color range, it was, it really picked. So I just select, uh, just brush, brush this. Just select my, make sure the foreground color is black and then brush it there. Then here, brush it like that because it's part of my image and oh, no other part of the model's face where it picked. Yep. Yep, that is looking amazing. Uh, I need to <laughs> go to my color lookup slightly and just run this one action which I always use uh, a lot which I always use in all my images to cool it even further because I like very cool images. Run the cooling filter 82 and there we go. We have, uh, guys, uh, in my next, I'll, soon I'll be giving out or selling this to lads. So if you want them, always just DM me and you'll get them. I feel now all this, if I could put all this in a group and show you uh, before and after, you can see how much we have done so far in this image. I didn't match anything together today. I just wanted to show you the whole process. Put all this in a group, control G. I select the top one and select the button one. Press shift and then select the button one. Then put all this in a ship, in a group and show you before uh, our image came to Photoshop and after we have done frequency separation, dodge burn and color grading. And um, you can come here to my actions, then just select reduce reds. Reduce words, where is reduce reds? There, because I don't want my image to look more red and just reduce the opacity of the reduce reds to make it look as natural as possible. Yeah, I feel that's better before, after, reduce reds, that's nice. So what I'll do, what I'll do, I need now to whiten the eyes, go to my uh, eye and teeth whitening, and then run the action. And then what I'll do, I'll just select on the photo filter, brush. Select my brush, make sure it's a very soft brush and then just paint on the models. Make sure the foreground color is white, then paint on the models. Eyes, like this, to just whiten the eyes. My, my computer is dragging slightly because I've been using this the whole day. Ah, the smoothing is at 100. Oh, that's why I feel it's, it's really dragging. And I really didn't want, don't want my computer to drag as I retouch my images because, you know, yes, I really feel this looks awesome. Let's reduce the Yes, we have a fully edited and retouched image. The next thing I'll, I'll do, I need to sharpen this image. So I uh, control shift alt and T to create another layer and then duplicate it. Go to my actions, then run the basic frequency separation action. Make sure the uh, radius is at four, then say okay. Then right here, uh, control, J to duplicate the high frequency layer, then create a mask and then invert. Then I need to make sure the pick your brush, soft brush, and reduce the flow to something like, let's say eight. Then just brush on the specific part of your Im model's image or on your model's face where you feel uh, the need needs to be sharp. Like the eyes also need to be very sharp. zoom out just brush like that and yeah we have a fully edited image let's reduce this slightly like this yeah guys uh to just add more contrast select selective color then uh blacks push the blacks inside like that and then on this yellows push them like this and like that and then yes fully edited image Yep. So guys, that's how to fully edit an image in Photoshop to make it even look 
So nice, you can reduce the, you can reduce this slightly until you feel you are comfortable with what you have. I feel the lips look nice. I don't have to retouch the lips. Uh, yeah, that's how you fully edit your image in Photoshop. Uh, guys, thank you for so much for watching this tutorial. If you really liked it, uh, don't forget to share this video to your friends and also subscribe uh, for more tutorials. And guys, I'm open for those critics because my aim is to become a better photographer, a better retoucher and a better person in life. Uh, be kind to one another and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in the next video. Peace out.